Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today I have a really big video for you. We're going to do an Apex Legends tier list. Now this is going to be a little different from the last one I did. I've really taken a lot of feedback to heart. We're going to categorize this into pub slash fun factor. Then we're going to redo the list and we're going to talk about the ranked meta. Then we're going to reset the list and then we're going to talk about the tournament meta. And then we're going to reset again and we're going to talk about the arena meta. Keep in mind a lot of this is prediction. This is going to be really difficult to play some legends because we've had massive overhauls to some legends altogether and the meta is still shaping as we're speaking. But we're going to do our best to predict, help guide everyone in the best direction possible. Let's see if we can have an open dialogue to see where legends fit best they can. So let's begin with the fun factor. Let's talk about legends in pubs and what we see most in pubs in terms of individuals that are really having a good time with legends. So based on feedback, I believe that crypto belongs currently in the C tier in pubs and also in terms of the fun factor. The issue is that Crypto is a very high skill ceiling legend. He didn't have a massive rework for season nine. I think a lot of newcomers really struggle with him. You see him a lot less and he requires a lot of squad communication, which can definitely be difficult. Also, as a reminder for this video, I'm going to be timestamping everything for you guys and where everyone sits per tier list and even on the breakdown of pubs versus ranked versus tournament and arena. So I'm going to do all that for you guys. Just want to take a little segue as we keep going onwards. Now, Caustic has unfortunately been nerfed to the ground prior. It was definitely needed, unfortunately, because of where he did sit and how much power he did have, especially whenever it bled over to ranked in tournaments. But I definitely see him utilized way less. Now, Revenant... I see a lot of individuals definitely use him quite a bit and he's very popular but the issue that I see is that other legends take a lot more of a higher win rate at times and everyone seems to enjoy other legends. I think that his push is really strong but it definitely leans more towards ranked and he's kind of got a weird vibe around him now because of how much people do not like him in ranked so I feel like that bleeds over to his fun factor as well as terms of pubs. Now next up this is me again I'm going to openly admit a little bit of bias here. I really like Watson. She probably belongs more in C currently because her fences don't work, but I'm rooting for a girl Watson. I think she's a lot of fun. I see a lot of streamers and a lot of people really play Watson still, especially in pubs to kind of meme around. I think she's got a lot of potential, especially because low profile was removed. So I think it kind of boosts her up just a little bit. But again, I'm not going to lie. I'll put a little blatant favoritism just to our girl there. Mirage is definitely very popular in pubs and fun factor, especially when it comes to his bamboozles and how much fun he can actually have in terms of the overall squad. He's really a duelist and it really sets quite well in terms of having fun with him. I think Fuse can go possibly down to the C list, but I put him in B just because he did get a bit of a buff and trying to see where he sits. I know people in the comment section may say C. I would probably agree with that. I'm going to see where his buff sits him because he's definitely a lot more grenade heavy than he was because they did buff him a little bit so this is me just trying to guess on where his fun factor is because he's got a buff and i have been seeing him more so we're gonna have to see where he sits overall horizon was very popular before probably around s and a tier but now she has dropped dramatically down to b i think a lot of individual players still really enjoy her but since her nerf unfortunately she doesn't really have as much presence as she did before I put Rampart high up in this list. I see major creators like the gaming merchant really play Rampart. And I see a lot of people really rally around her. So I'm putting her up high up on the list as well because same thing with Watson. I mean, she doesn't have low profile. Low profile has been removed from the game altogether. And if you're new to the game and you're curious what low profile was, it means legends that had a smaller hitbox took more damage. That has been re removed the game. It's not a part anymore. So that's why I put these legends closer together because they're both defensive and they both bring a lot of value. And it's very interesting to see where they sit. Now, next up, we have a lot of people rooting for our girl, Bangalore. Bangalore is definitely high up on the fun factor. You see big streamers like Shiv FPS really showcase her in pubs, and she is a lot of fun to play. Um, I know a lot of people who really would prefer to push her into ranked and to tournaments, but when we do that tier list, you're going to see the breakdown really set down. Again, reminder, this is pubs and fun factor. We're going to go through tournament listing here in just a moment. I think Pathfinder has a very high fun factor as well, especially whenever he flies around, he zips, very popular among pros, very popular around the casual audience as well. He definitely has a, a great personality in terms of his character, and he definitely brings a fun factor when it comes to pubs. Loba's moved up, high up higher up on the tier list. I've been putting a lot of videos, videos on her, and the community has really recognized her buff. I had a feeling, knowing that her buff is going to be really strong, and also because of the loot table, the way it feels right now, she definitely offsets that to ensure you're still having fun and grabbing the right loot. So she goes pretty high up on this list. 
Now, next up here, let's... I think everybody else here, in terms of fun factor, let's move Gibraltar in terms of fun factor around A. He has a lot of fun. I think he's very powerful. He's higher up in tournaments as well as ranked. But I feel like sometimes he gets slept on by the average pub community because he's a bigger hitbox. And I think people are afraid to play him sometimes. But people don't understand the power of Gibraltar. And those that do, they definitely get a lot of fun out of him. It's I, I can't put him down to B and C because he provides way too much utility. And he's really a lot stronger than people give him credit for. So that's why he's listed here. Now, let's go to S tier. Now, Bloodhound... They are extremely potent. They are extremely potent in what they do in terms of a fun factor, knowing your teams are. Definitely a high value legend in my opinion. They are going to be vital to any sort of team and know that Bloodhound is going to do a lot for your squad. Lifeline, I believe, now sits in terms of S tier for fun factor and pubs. Lifeline was always a high pick rate, very great for entry level players to really get used to and a high pick overall. So there's, especially with her buff, and I know she's got a rework. Her shield kind of got, I mean, didn't get nerfed. It got removed, so there's a blatant nerf. But her ultimate definitely provides more utility, and her drone provides more utility to the teams as well. And it shouldn't be slept on. It, she was already a high pick rate before, and she was definitely a fan favorite. Maybe not so much in ranked as well as tournaments, which you're going to see her drop on the tier list. But in terms of fun factor, I think she goes pretty high up because I think the community really likes her. Now for Octane. He is a powerhouse. I know that he got nerfed, but he still has a lot of power and utility. I know that people who are casuals among the community, even the pro players, do enjoy playing him when it comes to pubs in terms of ranked. He provides a fun factor. There's a lot of fun to be had with him. Wraith, also known as a sweaty TTV Wraiths, is very, very popular as well. And of course, we can't forget Valkyrie, who's one of the newest legends that everyone is enjoying. These, Both these legends get locked in at a high pick rate. You know, you'll see a Wraith, you'll see a Valkyrie. But I think this kind of wraps up just this portion in terms of fun factor and pubs. Okay, just again, disclaimer, fun factor and just pubs. Just for what we see with casuals, what we see them all the, all the time running pubs. I think this is what we're more or less kind of seeing um, overall. So let's reset. Now what we're going to discuss is we're going to break down the ranked meta, where I believe the predictions are sitting and how individuals are picking their legends. So I can't put within good faith Watson up to B tier. I did in the prior list because she has fun factor for me, but because of her fence is not working at the moment, it has been discussed that they would get fixed within the coming week. But at the moment, she sits quite low. I think she's going to get bumped up to B, but any pro team is going to push her. That sees a Watson knowing that her fences don't work, so that's not going to be good in terms of ranked. Caustic also gets pushed pretty hard because of his gas and the way it was nerfed before. He definitely needs some tweaks, definitely needs some love, but I don't know necessarily how to buff him in my, even my own personal opinion if you were to ask me, because I feel like if he gets pushed one direction too far, he instantly becomes overpowered. And we've seen that in tournaments and we've seen it in ranked, how difficult it is to deal with a really good Caustic. Rampart in terms of ranked meta falls in the same boat. We'll, we kind of notice a trend where a lot of teams get really pushed in ranked. Now, the, the meta I'm talking about is like Diamond to Master to Pred. So keep in mind, you'll see a lot of weird picks from Platinum down below. But overall, this is what you see around the Diamond, Masters, and Pred ranking of where Legends really start to sit. And I promise you that if you see anybody running those in a Diamond above, you're going to get pushed. And they're going to question if you're a content creator or what you're trying to do because you will get absolutely destroyed. Now, Mirage as well. He's great for pubs and he has a lot of fun factor. But when it comes to ranked, he really fall short and what utility he provides to the crew unless you are just a very well-known mirage and people follow you for that type of content then that's the reason why individuals re really resonate with him but in terms of ranked it's really hard to see a lot of strong mirages who really know what they're doing fuse drops down a little further i know i put him on b before he could sit and see even on the prior list he does have a buff but it's not enough for ranked and i really believe that he needs something more to provide to the team in terms of utility and it could be that he's a slept on legend at the moment but this is just the meta that we see crypto goes up to b tier it requires a person of really great skill set and knowledge to really maximize on crypto he can turn the tide of fights a hundred percent he has that capability and power but the problem is that most individuals don't know how to use him in ranked and because ranked is a lot more fast paced in tournaments he really struggles like for apac north he deserves to be on s and a tier but in terms of ranked, he definitely struggles. 
Horizon has definitely dropped down from the S and A tier that she was before down to B tier. 100% because of her tactical ability has been nerfed. It really stops her momentum and stomach for pushing power. Bangalore as well goes down around to the B tier. I've seen Shiv can definitely solo queue and just be an absolute boss and destroy with Bangalore. But there's a lot of other legends that we're going to get to in just a moment that provide a lot more utility, especially if you're trying to rank up as a squad. Now, the, you can break all the rules when it comes to a lot of these legends if you just have a really good player who understands positioning, which is why I don't have anything below a C tier. Because realistically, you can put the best player in the world as a Caustic or Watson, and they'll still fry teams and destroy it. Depend, doesn't even matter the comp, right? Just getting that out there. A tier, I feel like Pathfinder still slept on when it comes to ranked. He definitely has more mobility than Horizon at the moment, and we're going to see him potentially do a lot more than he has in prior seasons especially when low profile are removed and the fact that he has more mobility than horizon moves him up higher on the list lifeline definitely still provides a lot of utility when it comes to ranked you'll see a lot of teams still run lifeline realistically we can see lifeline drop all the way down to b the reason i have her higher up is that a lot of individuals were able to get masters and predator rank from utilizing lifeline but that's because all the other legends were kind of grayed out but I do believe that there's a lot of potential and I think a lot of that potential was opened up because of the limited options that started with season nine. So I do see her quite a bit in ranked and her res is definitely slept on. I believe that even though her shield is gone, she can kind of res a little bit more stealthily or she's a lot more stealth, uh, lack for a better word. I'm, I'm struggling right now for the right words, but I think she brings a lot more to the table overall, which is positive. Now, I put Revenant on A because it's extremely frustrating to deal with the Revenant and Ranked. If you see any team running Revenant Oc Octane, it's a, it's a scary combo. It's very frustrating to deal with. It's not fun to deal with, but we definitely see a lot of teams run this composition still, and it's really hard to counter. Very hard. It frustrates pro players. It frustrates the casual audience. It frustrates everybody. I don't know how to fix this necessarily, but that's why I put him lower on the fun factor, because I, I don't think it's really fun playing him, but that's my own personal opinion. But it's, I can't deny his meta and ranked and the fact that he can definitely turn the tide and break the game from what his ultimate does. I moved up Loba just because everyone is realizing her potential. I've seen a lot more individuals that hit the max rank in the game are playing Loba. I really enjoy her. I think her ultimate brings a lot to the table and her tactical ability, which has been buffed, definitely provides a lot of usage. It doesn't mean that she can't drop down to B tier. We'll see. This is just a prediction where I think she will sit. I'm definitely gonna, I'm playing her more now, especially because Watson's fences are broken. I might uh, go back to Watson afterwards and maybe Watson will go back up, but I've been really enjoying Loba for the time being. And I think that she can break the mold and really change up the game. But we'll see. This is again a prediction. Gibraltar for ranked is undeniably powerful. His utility and everything he brings to the table is just unmatched. There's not much else to say there. His res is extremely strong. He provides a bubble for rotation. He can stop team pushes. He can create space where none doesn't exist. Just a really strong legend. Same thing for Wraith. She's extremely powerful and potent. Now that low profile has been removed. I know before I put her in A, a prior tier list, but now she moves up to an S because she has low profile removed, making her even more potent than she was before. Now, Bloodhound, they provide so much utility when it comes to the team, just as much as they did for pubs. It has the same power and ranked, especially whenever you're pushing a squad or a team. He provides information when rank can be very, very chaotic. It's not predictable whatsoever when you're playing ranked at times. Sometimes the lobbies are really confusing. They'll die right off the rip and you have Bloodhound. They are there to support the squad to give them information and intel. The same thing can be said with Valkyrie. She's very much played right now, especially with the ranked. She can scan beacons. She can provide a lot of utility. She can rotate for free in the air. She is a ton of fun to play in ranked, and she has the fun factor. She has almost anything and everything, and I really believe she's going to break the mold when it comes to tournament play. Same thing for Octane. He provides so much utility and power when it comes to rotations, utilizing his jump pad, and it cannot be slept on. So when we understand why Octane has the power on its own, Revenant needs Octane to be even more potent. I mean, his ultimate is still completely broken, so if you're not running Octane, but most of the time when you see Revenant, it's mostly paired with an Octane in terms of the overall package deal. Now, let's move on from this list, and let's discuss tournament meta. This one is going to be a little difficult because there's so many, again, changes that have occurred in the game. 
So we're going to have to do our best to where we believe. I've shoutcasted a lot of events, so I definitely have a lot of time casting APAC North. I've casted North America and Europe for last chance qualifiers. And I've seen a lot of pro players really put a lot into action and to play. And I'm going to discuss the picks and what we overall see in terms of the meta. Okay, let's start off with Rampart. I have never seen Rampart picked in tournaments, so she gets immediately dropped down to C tier. She doesn't provide as much utility in terms of what Watson, other defensive legends can provide. And while we're on that topic, we did see a lot of Caustics really steer away from utilizing him. He was strong a few seasons ago, especially even last season, until he got his uh, nerf. Once he got that nerf, he really just instantly nobody would pick him anymore, and he stopped all his power and usage. You don't see any fuses in tournaments, and that is partly because of his... Anything that he does somebody else can do better and granted he can shoot grenades and has a free grenade in his inventory it's not enough to change up the mold in the game of what other legends can do that are on the s and a tier list overall mirage provides little utility when it comes to tournament usage so he is pretty much on the furthest down the list unless you get an amazing player who really knows how to play them then he definitely breaks the mold same thing for bangalore in terms of tournament usage i i don't think i've ever seen a bangalore in tournaments unfortunately i that's just kind of the unfortunate circumstance. I wish I have. Otherwise, I would definitely boost her up. Same with Revenant. I've seen teams try when they're, lack for a better word, desperate and looking for kill points when it comes to tournaments. Now, the issue here is that he needs Octane to be very potent, like I mentioned before. But a team that that's, that is running Octane, Revenant, and another legend is very, very niche. I've only seen one team really succeed and do it well, and that was Alliance. But I don't, I've never seen any other team really succeed. Every time I saw them try, they've always fell flat. So I've only seen very specific teams really succeed on this. Now, Horizon before was S and A tier. We may see her in tournaments, but I'm going to put the maybes on the B line here because th this is just like a maybe. She, her tactical has been nerfed too hard where she, it, her tactical is a way for pros to really struggle to shoot. And now that that utility is gone and she's much easier to blast out of the air her power and potency is now gone same with octane i've seen him utilized in tournaments as well but it's a very low pick rate compared to the others he definitely is really powerful but there's other legends that provide more utility than he does loba i'm predicting will be picked by maybe like one or two squads maybe same thing with these other legends like i could see this popping up but the question is how effective is it going to be same thing with Lifeline. Gibraltar just does everything better in terms of rotation and bubble than, unfortunately, Lifeline does. That's kind of just the reality when it comes to Lifeline. Now, Watson, until her fences get fixed, I won't really know where to place her. I want to place her up to S and A tier back into tournament meta. But the thing is, it's really hard to predict because we don't have any information. If her, until her fences get fixed, I will not know where she sits. Again, low profile has been removed, so a lot of these legends could definitely move up. And we're going to have to just kind of see where they decide to sit. Pathfinder's A tier. I definitely see a lot of teams running Pathfinder, but we're going to see... We'll, we'll see how many teams, because I know before, even before this patch came out, there are more teams starting to run Pathfinder. Gibraltar provides an amazing utility and rotation. He wasn't as mandatory of a pick before. I I almost want to move him just to, up to S tier. He's just so good. I, and I kind of struggle with, with the prediction of he if he's going to be A or S tier. Uh, I, I, th th this one's a tough one. Th this one's going to be tough because you honestly could be like on the borderline of A plus and, and S. That one's hard. Same with Crypto. Crypto, I know in North America and Europe, we don't see enough of him. But trust me, in APAC North, he almost runs like 50% of the lobby and you see drones everywhere. I dropped him down from the S tier list partly because on Europe and, and North America, you see a little less of him. But he is just a force to be reckoned with. Now, Bloodhound, they are more picked on North America as well as Europe. There's just a lot there that they provide to the team. This could be interchangeable. We'll see Crypto move up. But a lot of the recon characters, if you're noticing one in terms of scanning the beacon, just provide so much utility to the team. I'm predicting that Valkyrie is going to be one of the best legends to pick for tournaments. This is hopeful thinking as well. I cannot wait to see the meta kind of shift, but her... Ultimate ability just provides so much to the team, and I want, I'm hoping 
to see where this where this shapes things out and where things go from here. And Wraith, because low profile was removed, Gibraltar was higher up and Wraith would be lower. But because low profile has been removed from a lot of these legends, Gibraltar's power was really just smashing anybody who has low profile on them because they have fortified. But Wraith, I, I think, will get pushed right back into it because she doesn't take as much damage as she did and her hitbox is really hard to hit. This is a prediction that I have for tournaments that we'll see a lot of these comps kind of run together. Not necessarily these. It would be like, you know, Gibraltar, Blood, or Wraith, and Bloodhound, or Valkyrie, Gibraltar, Wraith, or Crypto, Valkyrie, Wraith, or Pathfinder. There's a lot of things. I feel like Wraith is going to be, again, the person that we kind of throw into the mix there as like the base as it was before but i could be wrong and that's I, that's just a, a prediction because low profile and being removed it, it is a really big deal for a lot of these legends and i definitely feel it for a lot of them but this is my prediction when it comes to tournaments now let's do another reset let's do the same thing again and wrap up with arenas let's talk about the the meta for arenas this is interesting Let's go from the C tier list. I'm going to put Revenant around the C tier. Now he has a silence and he can silence others' abilities and he's really strong. I could be sleeping on him on this, but my prediction for where I've seen him is that he needs to combo with other legends. And his ultimate, while it's good for a push, you don't necessarily just kind of want to wildly push an arena. And it kind of seems more like a mistake. Revenant is more powerful and potent in a battle royale setting where you can third party. That's where his strength lies. Now, Rampart, I'm putting around the C tier list as well. You can set up Prior with Rampart, and she is really strong, but the problem is a lot of people aren't seeing the end of the zone, and the rounds are ending before we even get a chance to really have the zone factor in. Same thing for Caustic. He fits in the same boat where the zone really has to close in to really feel the pressure of his gas. That's kind of big. Now, Crypto is in the same boat where you don't necessarily need all the information in the world if you have a Bloodhound to provide a scan he's much slower paced and he relies on intel information which is why he's so good for tournaments now when it comes to arena i really feel like he struggles and the individual player themselves has to be beyond on point to really maximize on his usage this is a personal bias because I really like Watson, but Watson realistically should probably sit around C, but her generator, her ultimate still provides a lot of utility. I think that she's going to be really strong to really play in arena because heals are a limiting factor and she does a lot for the team. Mirage is a great duelist. He can really bamboozle a team. And when it comes to how much damage you're trading, I think that he provides a lot of fun and a lot of utility there. Same for, for Fuse, realistically. Having the free grenade and extra damage for Fuse can be huge, especially with limited heals. I, I see him quite a bit more, and it's, it's good to see. Now, same thing for Horizon. She has a lot going for her because she's been nerfed. She definitely falls further down on the list. As she flies up in the air, she's just asking to take damage, but she definitely can provide height when it comes to the map for artillery and move her team, and it has definitely helped in terms of getting wins. Pathfinder has an extremely amount of great utility when it comes to being on A tier, so it's kind of hard to sleep on him on that. It, he's a lot of fun. Same thing with Octane, really. They, these two kind of go in the same category in terms of movement, in terms of A tier when it comes to Arena, so really strong and really positive. Same when it comes to, notice the trend here, these are all duelists, and it comes to mobility and winning a 1v1 fight, and smokes in the moment, these are really strong legends. Where they fall flat in terms of the battle royale they have strengths when it comes to winning an arena so maybe in the battle royale smokes can't necessarily provide you the most cover when you're getting shot from three different teams but if you're getting shot from one individual person you're trying to just confuse one guy or two people it definitely has more of of a benefit especially that movement speed bonus low but when her ultimate works is a tier she drops her ultimate she can grab four batteries right from the get-go she can fly fast into the center of the zone by using her tactical ability just as much as other legends will so she has a lot going for her as long as her i mean her abilities work otherwise if her ultimate doesn't work then i literally drop her down to b and almost c but that's the only frustrating part that i'm dealing with in terms of arena but i've been using her she's a lot of fun valkyrie a tier she provides a lot of utility for the team as well. Her ultimate has way less use, so that's why I drop her quite a bit. She can almost drop down a B tier 
in a way with Horizon, but she's really new and her jetpacks are really strong and she does have an offensive tactical ability. So it definitely moves her up to A. Bloodhound, those scans, man. Those scans are so good. Bloodhound, I mean, they just provide the information. Nobody has the ability to be peek if Bloodhound, if they have scanned. If they have scanned, you cannot make a poke or a peek. So they can provide the information that you're looking for for the squad. They definitely belong within the S tier ranking here. Information is key. It's like playing Rainbow Six Siege and getting free wall hacks in a 1v1 encounter. It's, it's really strong. All right, let's move on. Lifeline, S tier, that res is completely broken when it comes to arena. Even without the shield, it's really hard to counter. You listen, you get a knock from a distance, do a lot of damage. She instantly drops down her drone and heals them up. And they're right back on the action. There is no other legend that can provide a res as fast and effectively as Lifeline. You can say Gibraltar can land within this list as we segue over. He can throw it in his bubble and res just as fast. He is a big guy. He has fortified and they kind of fall into the same information in terms of utility. Let's imagine from a distance that you're on artillery and you snipe somebody, you go behind cover and Lifeline reses or Gibraltar throws down his bubble and he reses. There's upsides and downsides to both those encounters. The plus side for Lifeline is she can provide suppressing fire. The plus side for Gibraltar is that he has a huge bubble that's stopping all incoming damage. Wraith goes high up on the S tier list just because her tactical Q can get her, reposition her. She's one of the strongest when it comes to dealing with a 1v1 encounter. So you, you can't really lose here when it comes to utilizing Wraith. She just has a lot going for her. Her portal less so, so she could potentially drop down to A. But every sort of tournament and guide that I can think of that we've always discussed in terms of Wraith, she takes damage, she cues back, the other two go right into the fight. No other legend can really do that, just taking no damage for free, just instantly from a fight. So that's why she's so high up on the list. Mirage, if played well, can definitely go further up to bamboozle individual players, especially with his ultimate. We'll have to see where this meta is. Again, this is prediction. This is what I'm seeing so far, but we'll see where everyone gets comfortable with. I know that this is a longer video, but I want it to be really fair in terms of the list and provide as many different categories for everyone to really understand where we believe legends sit and why. And it's really hard because there's a lot of buffs and a lot of adjustments that has happened with a lot of legends. Again, I really appreciate all of you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. This is what I consider the ultimate tier list for Apex Legends Season 9 because we've covered so much. We'll tackle this again towards the end of the season when we have a lot more information once everyone settles in. It's only been a week. I have play tested the game prior. I've been playing a lot since the launch now. And these are just the current predictions of where I believe everything sits and my justifications behind it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.